Um, I am covering 21 social media tips and ideas for 2021 today. Um, this is the second, uh, actually the third webinar in a series of four webinars uh, that Cornell Cooperative Extension Sullivan County is hosting. Uh, and this one does sort of pick up on the first webinar uh, about branding. So if you want to go back and review that, it would be a great foundation, but it's not necessary at all. Um, the other thing about this presentation today is that it assumes you have just basic knowledge of Instagram and Facebook, um, which is what I'm going to focus on today. I realize there's TikTok, there's Twitter, um, there's Snapchat, there's other social media venues, but I'm focusing on Instagram and Facebook today uh, because those are the most um, used social media platforms. Uh, actually, YouTube is the most used social media platform, but um, Facebook and Instagram are more of what you think of when you think of social media. So that is our area of focus today. And we can go ahead and dive in. Uh, since it's a small group today, we can, um, we can pause if you have a question, idea, or comment. So no worries there. And I am going to try and wrap up by about 10.50. So there's plenty of time for um, questions and discussion. So the tips and ideas you're going to gain today, um, we're going to start kind of from the, the why. So the, the logic behind why you should, um, or, or why you're making a post on Facebook or Instagram. A lot of times it becomes, well, something I must do. So I have these platforms and I just have to put something up on them. And because social media is in real time, there's this pressure to always post something. And a lot of times um, clients I work with get so caught up in, in feeling that pressure to post that they're not thinking, well, why am I doing this? Why am I sharing this post? Or why am I creating this post? So stepping back for a framework first is what we'll do. And then we'll go into 16 post ideas for Facebook and Instagram. So first and foremost, social media is a conversation. It's between people. It's between people and businesses. It's between businesses and businesses. But even when there's a conversation between a business, it still is as if a person is talking. It's very um, casual. It's uh, typically casual, uh, approachable, friendly. Um, it's like having a conversation with someone. Even in the most formal settings, um, there's still an element of personal connection when you speak with someone. And we wanna think about that when we're on social media too, that it is a conversation, it's a two-way street and it's, um, there is that personal connection there that sometimes I think we forget. Again, we, we get on Facebook and we make a post and it's almost as if we're shouting. We're not waiting for a response or we're not speaking, if you will, when we post in a way that invites conversation or invites a response. It's almost like we're, we're just shouting or we're giving a speech. And what's interesting is that is more like traditional media, television, print, billboards, traditional media like that, that is um, speaking to the public or speaking to someone without expecting a response. Social media, you are speaking and you should be expecting a response or you should be posting and, and taking action in a way that incites conversation. That's how you're going to get the best return on investment for your time and money. So I remember the first time I was invited to join Facebook, I believe it was so early. It was like, uh, I think 2007, 2006. It was very early on. And I remember it was just, it was Facebook. It was for, um, it was for, actually at the time, I think it might've been college students. Um, but it was specifically for people. There was no such thing as Facebook for businesses or brands or um, in your case, a farm entity um, that just wasn't what it was built for. So I think that spirit going back to that, that's, that's the origins of Facebook and remembering that is gonna be really helpful. Um, by the same token, Instagram was created for like a selfie sharing platform. So sometimes it's veered away from that as well. And you, you obviously see um, photos of a lot of different things and graphics of a lot of different things. But 
keeping again the the origins of these media in mind um, will I think help you stay on track and create posts that are more friendly and more approachable. So now we're going to kind of um, you know with that knowledge, what can you do? How can you you take action on that? Um, what you want to do is come up with your business's personality. So you want to think of yourself, even though you're representing your farm or your, um, you know, let's say personal care, like a, you make soaps or whatever you are um, producing, that's your business, but your business needs to have a personality. When it's a small business, there's kind of a merging of personal and professional, and that's okay. So if you, like Barbara, for your business, if you are, if it's just you and it, you know, you interface with customers, it's okay to inject your personal personality into your business. Larger businesses are when there's, uh, where you maybe have a personality that's different from your business. Um, you still need to come up with a persona for your business and that's part of a brand. So that's why I referenced the first presentation in this series as we kind of go deep into what a brand is. Um, but kind of a crash course here is thinking of your business as a person. What are five personality traits of your business? And I find the easiest, um, easiest comparative example, even though it is not in agriculture and is not a small business, uh, is the comparison of Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. So, um, you know, off the cuff, you could say Dunkin' Donuts is uh, casu very casual, very um, upbeat. The stores are always very bright. Um, lots of pink and orange, even their logos fun. And um, it's, there's an emphasis more on almost the donuts than there is the coffee. Um, so it's, it's fun, it's lighthearted, very approachable, um, kind of goofy sometimes. Uh, then you have Starbucks. And Starbucks, still approachable, uh, but it's a brand that I think is a little, let's say, Starbucks would wear all black. Dunkin' Donuts would wear polka dots. Um, so Starbucks is a little more serious, um, sophisticated, I would say. Um, there's, yeah, sophisticated, serious. Um, you're someone you still would want to get to know. Maybe you're more aspiring to maybe a little aloof. Um, and, and it's not a knock on them. It's part of their brand. It what's make, it's what has made them a distinctive um, household name is the Starbucks is kind of an upper class coffee brand. So you can see here that these are two coffee shops, um, but completely different. And they also have, when you, when you highlight your business's personality, the other thing that's gonna do is um, solidify who you are in the customer's mind. So they start to expect um, certain things from you. So when you're on social media, you want to uh, make sure you use your personality and your persona in a way that's consistent. You don't want to be goofy one day, very serious the next day, unless obviously you're talking about something lighthearted and then something serious. But overall, you want to have a consistent personality. Think about um, your loved ones, your friends, um, your family. They have personality traits that are very different, but you have relationships with. And you want to think of that same um, that same interaction when it comes to your business, especially on social media, because as I said before, it's a conversation and a personal conversation at that. So I know that was kind of a, a deep dive into how to think about um, how you represent yourself online, but it's really important and it might change uh, how you're posting instead of just shouting out, hey, we'll be at the market Saturday. Um, could you say something lighthearted or give a joke every every Saturday morning, you know, start or, or share an inspiring quote um, if, if that's more your personality. Um, but just adding, injecting personality into your business is going to go a long way with increasing interactions. So the flip side of this is even, even though I am suggesting your farm or um, agribusiness needs, a, needs that personal voice and persona, you want to keep out anything political, religious, or polarizing. So um, it's kind of like if you were at a networking event, you can be warm, you can be friendly, but you also want to keep, um, because you're doing business. So you keep those things out of the picture. 
and I'm sure there's exceptions and, but this is just what I found is, is, um, is a successful tip. So this, if, if you take one thing away today, I, I would love this to um, really resonate with you because we all, when we're on social media for our businesses, we are on there to promote ourselves. That's why we're doing it. Um, and we're busy and it's not something, maybe it's enjoyable, it's something we know we're doing for our business, for our bottom line. The, the trouble is, is we are, most of us spend 100% of our time doing just that, saying, um, look at these beautiful strawberries, they're going to be at the market this week, or, um, you know, special five for $2 tomatoes. So we're, we're doing a lot of promoting. This rule, I did not come up with this, it's kind of a, uh, I, I don't know who came up with that, it. it's just a, kind of an assumed um, best practice for social media, but promoting really should only be about a third of what you do on social media. Um, the other time should be spent engaging and sharing. Because back to our conversation analogy, um, if you are constantly promoting yourself, no one wants to be around you. We've all been around someone that's constantly saying how great they are and talking about their accomplishments and you can't get a word in edgewise and you don't want to be around them. And that's the same with a, a your um, your personality on Facebook or Instagram. If you're always just talking about yourself, it's it's not, people don't wanna engage with you. So what does engagement and sharing involve? Engagement is just how it sounds. You are interacting with your customers or other businesses. So to activate that, you, you don't just need to sit around and wait for someone to leave a comment on your um, on your profile. You can actually, um, start following other pages on both Instagram and Facebook. And Facebook finally made this um, easy to access. You can create a news feed of other businesses and organizations um, for your business and follow them. So you've got your personal news feed, but then you click a button and it says view your pages news feed. And you can spend a third of your time going through and leaving comments and saying, you know, maybe if you follow another market, or a market that you're a vendor at, you can go on and say, we can't, we can't wait to be at the market this Saturday. And what that does is two things. You're showing your active and engaged uh, other, other customers are gonna see that. And you're also subtly getting your name out. So you're still promoting yourself, but it's in a way that's not so overt. So people are going to see your logo and your business name and they may click on your profile and start following you. So engagement is so important. Um, again, you want to make sure you keep it positive. Don't engage in back and forth under the name of your business. It, it just, it's not good. Um, so sharing, what does that mean? Um, using that news feed or the, um, you know, list of followers or people that you're following on Instagram, um, you can start sharing content from, especially it's easy on Facebook, Instagram, you can ask for permission to regram something, but on Facebook, you can just hit that share button um, and then add your own interpretation of what you're sharing and post it. And sharing's great because if you're stuck on what to post, going through that newsfeed I talked about and seeing what other businesses or, or organizations are posting, you might see something that relates to your business and go ahead and share that. What that's gonna do is that the um, business that you shared the article or photo from will get an alert that you shared their, their image and they may, they may start following you or they may start sharing your content, which is gonna give you more reach. So again, sharing and engaging are, are not overtly promotional, but you are still, you're not just wasting time. This is useful. It's going to get you uh, better results. The other thing is no one knows the algorithms for Facebook and Instagram. It's all secret. And anyone that says they know is lying unless they work there. Um, but there are a lot of theories that both Facebook and Instagram really prioritize business pages that engage because engaging and being active is using their products to the fullest. And that's what Facebook and Instagram want. They want more engagement because they want more people to stay on these platforms. So the more that you are engaging and sharing and not just promoting, 
Um, they may start, and this is all, um, you know, theoretical, but they may start favoring your page, maybe sharing more of your content because they see that you're more active, um, you meaning your business uh, is more active on, on social. So that's the rule of thirds. Now the pace of this presentation is gonna pick up. Those are sort of my very theoretical things. Um, actually, there's one more, but, and then we're gonna get into more ideas and it'll move a little faster. So I did this last time, but uh, Barbara, this will be fun uh, if you wanna chime in. Uh, but I, um, uh, I always ask people what is different about this picture or what is um, you know, notable. And I just wonder if there's anything that sticks out to you. And so uh, when I look at this picture, the first thing I would think of probably is that the cows look happy, content. Um, so if I was looking at a product, instead of looking at cows lined up in a dairy barn, I may think that this is more um, appealing to me. This is, you know, it's so funny about this is um, you, I know that you are, you work with animals. So I, I've never gotten this response and it is so wonderful because um, you're right. Promotionally, this is like the best image because it shows happy cows and they're out to pasture. Um, but yeah. So is there anything else you would notice? I think it's, um, are you able to, you're seeing the photo, right? You're seeing it on right, the I'm, I'm seeing it on a screen. Um, I mean, yeah, I have, it's hard for me to take away the animal part of it. You know, like I'm seeing generations. I'm, it's hard for me to get out of the whole, the whole thing. Um, so I guess, since I live in a pretty black and white world, I don't really see if there's a gray in there. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> there is there is a, can you see the purple cow? Oh, the one down at the bottom? Yes, now you know I what, if it. you're on a, I always do this in person when it's up on the big screen and maybe it's it's not I'm as I'm on busy. my phone, so it's- There we go, okay. Well, That's you know what, what this is actually, a might, good, it's a good- Not translate into mobile. Yeah. This, I'm not sure how it looks on a mobile device, This is, a, but I didn't know how to ask. That. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think this is a good teaching moment for me because I've always used this image because most people are like, oh, there's a purple cow. But um, this is a great example of making sure I'm, you know, when you're on social media, you want to design for the medium. And uh, I'm going to actually alter my presentation slightly and bump up the purple so it's a lot brighter. So I'm actually <laughs> glad that you didn't notice the purple cow because it, it does it does bring up a good point um, and we're gonna touch on it later that you want to make sure your graphics pop. And um, the purple cow is just indicative of something that usually people um, will say right away, well, there's a purple cow. And so that, that response is what we're aiming for on social media is we want people to to say, well, that's something remarkable, meaning it's worthy of remark. And it's it's something that is easy to understand because think about it, we're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. We have milliseconds to process things. So intricate, um, very, very intricate graphics or intricate posts in general are usually not gonna work. Although there are exceptions, which I'll get to like stories. And in this case, someone that is very, very, you know, interested and laser focused in the subject material is going to see things differently. So, um, but in, in general, um, you know, you want to, to be remarkable. Um, you want your posts to stick out. This, this should be more obvious. So this, I just popped in some um, random feeds and yes. <laughs> this is how your eye works. You want things, you want things to pop out. Um, and this I talked about a lot in my first presentation as well, but we wanna also, we want that in, instinctive response of something that's remarkable is usually something that makes you go, huh, or makes you go, wow, or makes you feel something. Um, these are all.
you do those things, then then connection is off. Can you guys hear me okay? No, you're coming. Yeah, in, now we can. But we can hear you better now. And um, if you could just start maybe over from the uh, slide. Yep. So um, when we are on social media, everything happens kind of instantaneously. Um, so you don't have time to really to think about your reactions. And we can use that to our advantage when we're posting. Um, we wanna give someone an experience or a feeling right away. So when we go to post something, we wanna think about the end user. How are they gonna feel when they see this? And if, if you can't immediately say how they're gonna feel, uh, don't post it. It should either make someone say, oh, that's, that's a cute picture of the calf or wow, those radishes look beautiful or um, you know, some sort of emotion should be had. But if when you look at the photo or you look at the post and read it and you don't have an emotion, I mean, even something as simple as saying what you're going to have at the market should make someone feel excited. If you can't get that emotional response, then don't post it. Um, same with it, informing that, that takes a little more time with a post, but you wanna give someone something of value so that they feel like, uh, you know, your business cares about them and, and is happy to share information. And once you do these things, then you're remarkable in the sense that people might either share your post, um, make a comment, and they may even talk about you offline, which is the holy grail of social media marketing. So that's, that's, this is something that I've kind of come up with and it's, it's helped me when I go to, to post things. This is another test, just say, would you show or tell a friend in real life? Um, or, what? What was oh, that? Oh, nope, sorry. Uh, um, ask yourself if you would share this information in real life with your customers. Um, and again, if you can't, or, or show a picture of something on your phone and say, hey, look at this. If you wouldn't do that in real life, then don't bother doing it online. So another, now we're gonna, there's kind of, uh, two or three tips that are more organizational. And the first one is you wanted to find the time that you have and the tempo that you're going to post. Um, a lot of times when people start off with social media, they, um, they're they really overzealous and they'll post like three times a day or every day for a week. And then they start realizing it's a lot of work and they'll go to every two weeks and then things fizzle out and they'll go months. So be, be intentional with how much time you have. And remember the rule of thirds, it's not just making posts. Um, it's also engaging. So just be honest with yourself. Do you have one hour? Do you have 30 minutes? Do you have two hours? And then break it up into your rule of thirds and that will help you plan out how much time you need for social media. Um, the other thing is, is the tempo of, of posting. So again, you may start off strong and then fizzle out. I mean, even if you only post two or three times a week, that's fine. But that also goes back to the persona and consistency of personality. Um, it's like someone that will text you furiously, uh, you know, about something and then you ask them a question, you don't hear from them for weeks. It's very similar on social media. You're going to have people feeling like you're flaky or you're not devoted to them. So you want to be consistent in how often you post. And they're really, you know, there's conflicting um, kind of research out there. I mean, the more you can post, the better, but you don't have to do it every day. Every few days is fine. Even once a week, if that's, that's how you, you know, that's the time you have, that's fine. I would say Facebook seems to, um, you know, posting more frequently on Facebook seems to be better than posting more frequently on Instagram. You don't really need to post as much on Instagram, I would say. Uh, but if you can do two or three times a week, great. So uh, a way to get every, I, I really, really recommend you do this is create a content calendar so you can get everything organized in one place. Um, I will actually skip ahead here. This is something, a content calendar that I use for another client. Um, and I, I don't just use it for social media, but over on the far left, and it's just in Excel, it's very simple, but um, I have the days. Um, and then if there's a national holiday or event, um, I put that there. And then 
you know, do I need to make a social graphic? Am I going to post a link or share something? And this just helps keep me organized, but I literally do it for the year ahead and I include every day of the year. And it doesn't mean I have to post every day, but I just have a calendar. And that way, if I, let's say in February, think of something I wanna post in you know, June when strawberries are ready, I just pop it into my content calendar. And then the best thing about uh, planning ahead is you can actually make posts in advance directly in Facebook and Inst in Instagram. Um, you can actually use Facebook to pre-post to Instagram. And I think you can do it up to like a year in advance. Um, a, a really great tool is hootsuite.com. It's um, free. It's free. You can have more functionality if you pay, but you can get some basic tools um, you know, at your fingertips there. And one of the great things is you can post, create posts and schedule them in Hootsuite and then it will launch them when that date comes. So it's basically spending some time now before the market season really gets going to plan out some of your posts. Now things like, you know, exactly when sweet corn comes in, you're probably not gonna know, but you can at least put in your content calendar, you know, uh, post about sweet corn and maybe you have a funny joke that, that goes with it that you wanna use and just put it in your content calendar um, around the time sweet corn would be ready. Um, the other thing is, where do you go to get graphics? And there are tons of, um, you know, post makers actually in Instagram and Facebook. Now you can add captions, graphics, um, and Instagram stories. You can add a lot of cool, um, features. Uh, but if you want to create a graphic on your own, uh, you want to make sure that you are using, um, you're using things safely. Uh, like photos. Uh, obviously, the best is if you take the photo. And if it's of other people, you want to get their permission. But if you're taking a photo of your products, no big deal. You can post that anytime. If you want a generic photo, um, you know, like this of someone working in a field, or um, maybe it's the first day of spring and you want a picture of daffodils, but you don't have any daffodils, you can use these two sites called Pixabay and uh, pexels.com, they are copyright free photos. So you can't go to Google images and grab an image, it's illegal. Um, these are safe sites and that um, there are no rights involved. Um, the photographer, the artist has said, anyone can use this. You can also grab quotes from goodreads.com and brainyquote.com and make a quote, um, you know, a decorative quote. You can also use to actually generate your images once you have the, the graphics that you want. Um, you can use Canva and Adobe Spark. They're both free and um, really fun and intuitive to play around in. So I'm going to pause here um, if anyone has questions and then we'll kind of dive into these post ideas. I have, I have a question. Can you, do you have a template you could share the yearly calendar? That one, I can, I mean, that, it's not really a template. Um, I can I can try and clear out all of my stuff in there and send that. That would be fine. I would, that would be, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, that's um, really good. And then my other question is, do you, and I have to go back because this is the first time I've been a part of it. So I imagine that the other classes are available where they recorded that we can go back and watch. Oh yeah, yep, Ashley can. Um, yes, I, they are They are available on our website at the marketing page in the agriculture section and I can send you the link. That would be awesome. Um, and then um, some people say, you know, depending on who you're marketing to, mm -hmm. um, they use Instagram over Facebook, I mean, I don't use, I don't use Snapchat, TikTok, you know, any of that type of stuff, um, just Instagram and Facebook, but I've tended over time to use Facebook much more than Instagram. And some of my 30 to 40 year old clientele have said, you really need to use Instagram. So do you find yeah. that there's a preference? Yep. So Facebook, as time goes on, is skewing older and older. Um, but Instagram, yeah, the sweet spot you mentioned, the 30, 30 year old, 40 year old, late twenties, 
um, even 50, you know, it's, it's skewing even older as well because the original users 10 years ago are growing up and they're still the intense users. It's really the younger generations on Snapchat and um, YouTube and TikTok. And that, so I would say if you are reaching, if you want to reach the 30 to 40 year olds, you definitely should be on Instagram. Instagram. So um, it really is, it's an easy social media tool. And like I said, you don't have to post as much on there. Um, but when you do just making sure you're capturing and we'll get into this right now, some, you know, something interesting or remember something informative or entertaining is usually the best test um, of, of why you are posting. So I would, I would try to maybe, even if you start once a week or um, just trying to get back into Instagram, it's, it's a lot of, it's a fun platform, so. Super. And you went over that in previous classes, more about Instagram? No, the previous class I really talked about, it was specific to at market activity. So how you market yourself at the market. Okay. okay. The first section though does cover branding, which is really applicable to, um, I think it's like 10 minutes I go into kind of what is a brand and why it matters. Um, but yeah, it's, it is specific to how to, you know, merchandise your products at the market. So, so uh, may I ask one more question regarding yeah. branding before we get off since it's just yeah. us. Um, so I have a farm brand yeah. and, and the farm is well known in the County. So, yeah. you know, um, but the farm brand is interchangeable. Um, so my farm predominantly offered, uh, riding lessons, events, horse boarding, livestock, education, you know, it all kind of wrapped into, into that. Yeah. Um, and so I don't want to skew too far from my, you know, from my brand because everybody knows the name and such. Do you think that that's an issue if I wanted to do like pop-up things, pop-up would... events? Yeah, I would always stick with the brand people know okay. um, and, and use that no matter, unless you're doing something totally, I mean, if it's involving livestock or, or you know, horses. Agriculture. Or anything, agriculture, like stick with the name you've been using. And that's actually one of the rules of a good brand is, you know, is it memorable? Is it unique? And most importantly, is it used consistently? And I always should talk about the John Deere example that they've had essentially the same logo and same name since like 1870. Mm -hmm. they, they haven't really changed it. Is it the greatest name? I mean, just someone's name, you know, it's, but it's been used so long. It's now a household name. So right. I would stick with brand. It's called brand equity. It's like how much equity you've built up in your brand and time is one of the defining factors of brand equity. So you've built, spent all this time using it. You probably don't want to change it. Okay. To, you could update it, but I wouldn't change, change the name. No, no. We, I mean, we've always had the name we've updated like one, I mean, just give you an example, you know, one truck has the horse and the, and the tree logo, which has always been our older logo. And then my daughter's truck, because she trades the cattle, has Stonewall Farm, same, um, same lettering, but it has cattle, you know, and people noticed it right away. They were like, why is there no horse on your truck? Yeah. And I was yeah. like, well, so, that's I mean, the truck we use for cattle. Yeah. And maybe over time, you know, this isn't urgent, but over time, your logo could include both cattle and horses, you know, have a, right. or have a, a cow and a horse. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Because, her logo does. My daughter's yeah. logo does. But it was just interesting. People noticed it immediately. Yeah, that, it, that well, that's why logo. That's a that means that you you have that brand equity that people knew about, you recognized your logo, which is great. And if you alter it slightly, that's fine. So you know maybe start using the one with both animals in it going forward, and and be intentional about that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, um, cool. Barbara, could okay. I just? Uh, sorry, Lindsay, just one no, more um, for your question about. Facebook and Instagram, just to circle back, they do work um, together. So you can use what is called business suite or like Lindsay was saying, Hootsuite to do posts to both and schedule them ahead of time. So you don't have to post on Instagram and post on Facebook. You just make one post goes to both sites since That's they're great, both actually the same point. company. Yeah. Um, and you can just tailor them so that they fit for both sites. Cause again, um, like Lindsay had said, you know, the pictures on Facebook, um, 
have a different layout. It's one-to-one -one on Instagram, which is essentially a square photo, but they actually work pretty interchangeably or essentially the one-to-one -one works on both. Um, captions work really well. And then if you wanna say more, you can write more later. Uh, so, so I would try um, just using what you're doing for Facebook and pushing that onto Instagram. And then if you get any feedback, you can start tailoring them so that they work for both mediums really well. I guess I have to go and see because I haven't used the Instagram in so long. Um, if it's, is there? You just I'm have to link I, them. I, I know. I'm wondering if I did it as a personal Instagram or as a business. I'll have to go and see. If and I you know what? In. With Instagram, you can, um, you can change, change it over to a business profile. You just have to. Okay. The, yeah. Um, if you Google, I actually had to do that the other day. Um, if you look it up. Um, there's step-by-step -step instructions, like, um, it, it takes two minutes and then, okay. then you can do what Ashley's saying. And it's a great way to kind of test the waters and see if people are interacting with what you post. Perfect. And, I will, yeah. I will do that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I am going to, um, dive into our social media post ideas. Um, I usually spend about a minute on each, so we should still wrap up about it'll be a closer to 11, but um, this should just kind of get you thinking. And a lot of times when I share some of these ideas, it gets you, gets people thinking of other ideas. So um, I hope this part is helpful. Um, some of these are from years ago, but I've, I've loved them. So I've kept them in my presentation, but um, one of these is uh, Shen Hopple Farm. They're actually in your neck of the woods. Um, they used to vend at Roscoe and I think Calicoon. Um, but an idea is to share an insider's look at your life as a farmer or, um, you know, in your case, Barbara, working with livestock because people want to go behind the scenes. They want to see things that they normally wouldn't see. They don't want that perfect picture of a cow standing in a field because that's just commonplace. But could you show them, you know, a, a calf that was just born and, you know, how you warm them if they're, if they're not warm enough? Um, this I thought was cool. They used um, infrared an infrared picture to show the hives uh, during the winter. And I love their, their tone um, here. You know, they work with bees. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. <laughs> but it said, Happy New Year, everyone. Bees be with you instead of peace be with you. I thought that was really, like, they're, they're very witty. Um, but this was interesting. I mean, I would never have guessed that you could see into a hive um, with infrared photos. Um, another, uh, you know, way to kind of take people along your journey as a farmer is to share discoveries. And it does not always have to be related to your product like this. Um, the new that, um, they shared here, I think it's, it's so interesting. I mean, I always forget in upstate New York that we have newts and salamanders. So I thought this was really cool that, you know, they just shared something that they discovered and took you along for that journey. So as you're noticing here, they're not always promoting their product. Um, this is kind of actually, I would actually consider this a sharing under the rule of thirds, this is sharing because you're just sharing information or something, or not information, sharing a discovery or something about life on your farm. This, this guy looks so blase and uninterested. Um, but the, the point here is, um, always put your face first when you are, um, or, or you, not always, but think of times when you can feature your face, um, especially on Instagram. There's a study at Georgia Tech and they found that, um, on Instagram, um, photos with faces get about 38% more likes. Um, and I think that that's still true. The study I think is a few years old, but uh, we always, I shouldn't say we, but farmers and um, agribusinesses I work with take so much pride in their products. Sometimes I think they get caught up with featuring their beautiful products too often and forgetting to show who they are and their family, if your family's comfortable with it. But showing the people behind the product is really important. And I'm not just talking about a distant shot again, you know, someone standing in the field with the cow. That's not so interesting, but if it's maybe you know, it's a really rainy day and you come into the barn and take a picture and say, you know, and do a selfie and say, wow, you know, um, out with the cows, you know, in this downpour. 
And, and that does two things. You're putting your face first so people are getting to know you, but you're also, also subtly saying, hey, I, I work hard and I care about my livestock and that's gonna come through in the products that I uh, bring to you at the market. Um, the, this is Trapani Farms in your area as well. Um, but you know, here they are working, they're out, um, out in the field smiling, but this is close up enough uh, that I think you get that benefit of showing faces. And I, I like this one because yeah, they have the far away pictures so you get the scale, but then you can see up close who these people are. And these are the people that you would see at market too. Um, this is a new concept, I'd say new in the past few years of influencers. And we all know like the notorious influencers, like the Kardashians, you know, you, uh, businesses will pay millions to get them to mention their product. But that concept actually is playing out on the local level too. Um, this was some influencer in Texas. Um, I, I just found it by um, kind of looking around Instagram, but she has 20,000 followers, so she's considered a micro-influencer. A nano-influencer would be someone that has about, you know, 1,000 to 2,000 uh, followers on Facebook or Instagram. But anyway, she, um, I'm assuming that uh, a farmer's market association, or it, it, it's a, um, it's called Texas Real Food. It's a website where you can find local foods. My guess is they reached out to her and said, hey, can you mention us and um, she did, and I'm sure she got paid for it. Maybe she got, um, uh, you know, free products. So if there's someone like you, Barbara, if you know of someone that's, um, you know, in the horse world, has a lot of followers, maybe reach out and say, hey, you know, would you mention our farm and we'll be happy to give you, you know, a free week of boarding or I, I <laughs> that's probably way too, too generous on your part. Uh, whatever it is, I mean, there's value in this because this influencer, has followers and they're then plugging your product. So, um, but you know, for, for a smaller farm business and not a regional or national business, you may even know of these people already. Um, you may have them in mind. This is another guy I, I just looked up cat skills and um, this, this uh, man has about 1200 followers. Um, you know, you could direct message him and say, hey, I see you were in the cat skills um, you know, would you, next time, would you want to go to the farmer's market? Or you could see that he is, um, you know, goes to the Catskills every weekend. And if you feel like you're being a stalker, remember, these are public profiles. So these people choose to let the public see them. So you're not being creepy. Um, and, you know, a lot of times people are very flattered if you reach out and say, hey, I see you have a lot of followers. I see you're in the Catskills. I see you went to a farmer's market. Um, could we send you some of our cheese? If you like it, we'd love for you to post about it. So it, it kind of takes a little bit of discomfort, I think, in trying to reach out to a stranger, but the payoff can be great. So to find those influencers, um, you know, search the hashtags that would relate to your business. Um, the other thing is, in Instagram especially, you, I, I know you can click on your followers and view their profile if it's public. Um, and so you can see already by looking at who follows you, maybe you already have an influencer following you. You don't know that. And if you do, you definitely want to reach out to them because they already like your business. They already are interested. Um, a great way to provide value and not be too self-promoting is to share knowledge. So recipes, storage tips, hacks or shortcuts, um, you know, like, do we store apples on the counter or do we store them in the fridge and kind of give your two cents as an apple grower? Um, I, I used to work in radio and there are a few studies that um, suggested that starting um, sentences with a question is gonna yield some better engagement. So this, this post said, you know, ever tried to fry or bread zucchini flowers? And then they share a recipe. So I thought this was a great post. Um, you know, we talked about making people feel something and humor. Sometimes I think with culinary related things, you can get a little serious. So if you're always posting, posting recipes and prep tips, people might get a little like, okay, you're sharing a lot of information, but I also want to feel something. And so, you know, you could do something with funny shaped vegetables, 
Um, you know, like this hashtag I looked up is weird veggies and there's hundreds of posts with funny shaped vegetables. Um, so something like that, that's just irreverent and might get someone to laugh. That's, that's just getting them to know you more and you're sharing your personality or your business's personality. Um, another thing you can do is kind of tap into the memes, um, like the Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders mittens, um, and the recent uh, ever given uh, ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can kind of play around with these memes that go viral. Usually, you know, I said earlier, never steal from Google images, but once an image is in the public domain to the amount that it's being created into these memes millions of millions of times over, you're okay. I mean, there's, these images are now um, they've been they've been shared so much that you're in general you're probably going to be safe. Um, I I can't <laughs> I have to give my legal disclaimer that uh, I can't say for certain, but uh, the risk would be very very low if you made a meme out of the Bernie Sanders in his chair. Um, this one is actually not the famous one where he has his hands crossed, but this one has also been created into probably thousands if not millions of memes. Um, another thing you can do to kind of kind of spark um, an emotional connection with your customers is to kind of get behind a cause. So this was something we did here in Onondaga County where we had some issues with people that were coming up too close on tractors um, and farm equipment. So we did this, this uh, graphic and it was shared over 800 times. And we had a lot of engagement because people, people felt strongly about it um, in the agricultural world and um, you know, even people that uh, weren't in agriculture, I think it kind of made them stop and think twice. So <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that you don't have much time to grab someone's attention. However, um, long posts on Facebook, if you word them correctly, and I could do a whole presentation on this because it is very in depth, but there is a lot of psychology to getting someone to read a long post. And these are the things that go viral. I'm sure you've seen them. Um, they're usually involving strong emotions, heartfelt stories. I call them like Hallmark posts. Um, they either you know, make you wanna cry or make you feel like, aw, this is so sweet. Um, but no matter what, they, it's telling a story. So if you have a very touching moment with a customer, um, maybe with um, a battle that you fought to save an animal on your farm, uh, those are the things that get people engaged uh, and, and commenting and sharing and ultimately building a bond with your customers because you're, you're sharing the emotions that you're feeling and they're coming along for the ride. So you want to read up on the story arc <laughs> just like you had to in high school. Uh, this was a, a volunteer group I used to work with called Q's Pit Crew. Um, that tried to educate young kids about um, humane interactions with animals. And um, this is actually interesting because it was letting a school that had a really great presentation and the kids really responded. It was letting them tell the story. So it shared their testimonial and their letter in full. You wanna get permission, but if you have a customer that leaves you a long positive review, always ask if you can share that because they're doing the work for you. They're telling the story and you're just sharing it. Um, this is something I used to use a lot. I still do, but I'll actually just, um, I use different software, software now um, to create videos. But if you wanna create videos quickly, um, the slideshow feature is kind of hidden on Facebook. Um, when you go to, you click share a photo or video and click create slideshow and you can either upload your own graphics or images or select from ones you already have at your profile um, and it will create a video. And why does that matter? Um, there are some, there's some research again that suggests that Facebook and Instagram both favor videos over photos. Why? Because videos keep people engaged longer than a photo. So um, consider using the slideshow because you are creating a video and it's very easy to do. Um, it's all automated for you. 
I'm just gonna check my time here. Okay, I'm rushing through the last five. Um, Another thing is to try and be different. So we talked about the purple cow, sometimes literally that works. This was years ago for the, the Liberty market, but it got um, over 28 shares, which you know, for a small um, market, a small post, or, or a, you know, it's not like we had a ton of followers at the time, but that was a lot. Um, you know, we had 63 interactions and a lot of comments. And I think a lot of the success was because it was purple, um, purple and pink. And a lot of times with, agriculture, we see a lot of greens, we see a lot of browns, we see pops of color here and there, but not a lot of it. Um, so trying to kind of play around with different colors might um, really trigger some, some more engagement. So this one's tricky because everyone's afraid of it, but um, going live on Facebook and Instagram is a really powerful tool to get engagement. Um, you could do a long live uh, video uh, or take people along your daily chores. Again, Barbara, if, you know, say, you know, come on, I'll show you what I do every morning or I'm in a, uh, you know, every once a month, I'll give you kind of like a, a tour of what we do in the barn. You could even set up a tripod and let people watch so you don't have to hold the phone. However, when you go live, um, this is... Um, a woman locally here that has an awesome uh, beef farm and she, she loves going live and people love it too. Um, having your face up close is key. Uh, it's again, it's like that face first uh, study that shows when you're face first, you get more interaction. That's definitely true with a live video. Um, her videos always get at least a few hundred views and um, a lot of interaction too. And they're very real. She's, she gets a lot of laughter emojis um, and you know she shares the good the bad and the ugly of being a, a beef farmer um, another thing that you can do uh, to really get engagement up with your customers is give them shout outs and feature them now you always want to ask their permission but this is a great way to kind of shine the spotlight on someone else and so again you're not self-promoting your business the other thing is when you feature a customer, like maybe it's customer of the month or a recipe that they've submitted, um, they're very likely to share it and say, hey, like, look at this. I was featured on such and such uh, business's Facebook page or look, my recipe that I love so much has hit the big time. So it's kind of working double duty. Um, this example was, again, for the Q's Pit Crew volunteer group. Um, they would do a volunteer of the month. And uh, it also just shows that so you could do a customer a month. It just shows that you are appreciating the people that support you. So another fun uh, post idea is um, looking up holidays. And I'm not talking about the big ones, although those are great for posts, but there's all sorts of very strange holidays out there. Um, like today um, is National Walking Day. I heard that on the radio this morning. Um, it was an oldie station I was listening to with my son and they were playing all songs related to walking. So people seem to love these very reverent holidays. Um, you can see there's thousands of them at holidayinsights.com, but they're great for, um, for creating posts. So April 19th coming right up is garlic day. So you could create a graphic and share that. Uh, I always use uh, hashtags too, uh, because those days will be trending on Instagram, especially. And there's a high chance, you know, your, your post, if it's clever or fun, it, it could go viral. Um, with these holidays, you always want to cross check them. Some of them are just, I, I think they just make them up and no one else is posting about them. So just do a quick cross check on Google. So if it's garlic day, look it up and make sure it really is April 19th. So you should be seeing big companies posting about it. You should see news articles about it. Uh, this is just an example for June, all of these national days that would tie into agriculture. And this was just a post that we did on uh, another page, but it, it, it was a small thing, but I think because we tagged it National Egg Day, uh, we also tagged a bunch of egg farmers in our area um, it got it got some good engagement. 
you can also take these national holidays and kind of build on them with promotions beyond social media. So if it's cheese day and you, um, uh, you know, you create cheese, obviously that's an endless amount of ideas, but let's say you sell veggies, you could share a recipe that involves cheese or a cheese dip for veggies. Um, you know, you can also just do plays on words, like not to be cheesy, but we love our customers, um, you know, in a fun little graphic that you create. And this graphic, by the way, um, I just use Photoshop, but um, you could make this in that canva.com or Canva app that I mentioned. And this photo, it's beautiful. It's from that website I told you about, Pixabay. So there's no worries about copyright. Um, second to last idea is crowdsourcing. So inviting interaction and actually asking for it. It's an obvious way to get engagement. So Barbara, you know, if you have a, a new horse or a new cow that's born, ask your followers to name it. Um, so that's going to do two things. That's going to get the engagement up with your customers. But Facebook and Instagram will also take notice and say, wow, um, Barbara's business is getting a lot of engagement and interaction. They must be a really quality business. I'm going to make sure that uh, I show their business to more customers. And again, this is all theoretical, but um, you know the algorithms do seem to prioritize uh, pages that get a lot of engagement. Last thing, um, rethinking events. So Facebook events are really powerful because they will, Facebook will sh suggest your event to other people for free um, if they're interested in things that you are uh, featuring at your event. So, you know, you could some, I've seen some vendors actually set up an event for every time they go to the market. I think that's excessive, but if you have something special you're doing at the market, set up a Facebook event and just see how it goes. So if you're doing like a tasting or a demo, or um, I put strawberry festival here because let's say strawberries come in, you could do a, you know, strawberry grand opening or a strawberry celebration and offer a special deal that, you know, people might want to click on an in, in RSVP to make sure um, they get that deal. And that is it. And let's see, I was just five minutes over. So um, I can stick around for 10 minutes if we want to um, go over questions or if you have ideas. Um, I just have one more question. So oh, Lindsay, no, that, was, no that was awesome, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, okay. When you use your hashtags, do you, like I see some people use 20 hashtags at the end of something so that they touch, you know, all different things. Um, so I would use like hashtag Stonewall Farms, hashtag local, I, I don't know, like I'm just thinking out loud. So I'm, I'm looking yeah, for that. Yeah, so hashtags are interesting. And Ashley, I'd love, I know you're really um, good with hashtags. Have there, on Facebook, I always feel like hashtags are, almost like they're at, you see them a lot, like almost like humorous, like I just ate, um, you know, five garden fresh tomatoes and then hashtag, sorry, not, sh sorry, not sorry, or hashtag, you know, uh, I, I don't know, but they're used almost like humorously or to add to the post. Uh, whereas on Instagram, I, I they're more purposeful. And I would focus more on using hashtags. So Instagram, okay, hashtags would be like for this presentation, I was looking at the cat skills and I wanted to see other, I wanted to see people and what they were posting about in the cat skills to see if I could find anything related to farmer's markets. So I looked up hashtag cat skills and just started scrolling through them. But um, let's say I was interested in, I was really into um, a certain breed of horse or a certain breed of cow, I would maybe search by that hashtag. So you, you want to think what people might be searching for. Um, the other thing is Instagram uh, will, again, it's, you don't know how far or how much more visibility you'll get, but if a hashtag is trending, meaning a lot of people are suddenly using it or it's, it's building up and in, in use, then 
um, the Instagram may show your post to more people because you're posting about something that's trending. So I would say use it, you know, it's fine to use your farm name. Um, always use it consistently, whatever you're going to use. Uh, use that same hashtag for your farm name. But um, try and think of ways to describe your what you're sharing and uh, think about the person that would be viewing it, what they're interested in, and use those hashtags. The other thing is you can use Instagram to check what hashtags are trending. So if you have a certain um, breed that's maybe very rare, you can search that hashtag and see how many people have posted about it. Okay. So that's, that's hashtags in a nutshell, but Ashley, I would definitely like to hear what you, you have to say. Well, you very much explain the philosophy or the theory behind how they work. Um, and I agree, I think they're only really worth doing on Instagram since you're doing it for business. This is all strategic. Um, so again, you're going to pick hashtags that are going to get you seen. So what's in, what um, Lindsay was saying about, you know, popular hashtags that basically describe your post or your photo. So they have to be relevant. They can't just be like the most popular yeah. hashtag, um, like COVID <laughs> or something, if it is not relevant yeah. to your um, posts, but they, there are some ones that are really popular in the cat skills that, for example, I use that would be similar to maybe um, your usefulness as a farm business, but I'll read, and I always use the most because essentially the more the better, the more you're going to get seen, you're allowed 32, and if I'm going to put in the effort to go back and look at my post and make a comment, I'm going to go ahead and do as much work as is possible. It just seems mm -hmm. more efficient to me. So it's really up to you. What I also do is I save them. So I do a copy block on my phone. It's in like a little note. I copy and paste it and then I'll add one. So like I have kind of like a group of 15 or 20 generally, and then I'll add like 10 or 12 more that are the relevant ones. Um, so for example, I posted National Ag Day, you know, happy National Ag Day to all our farmers. Some of the hashtags were National Agriculture Week, Future Farmers of America, National Ag Day. Those are the relevant ones. Um, some of my common ones are for like local food, Thank a Farmer, No Farms, No Foods, New York Grown, I Love My Market, Farmers Markets, yeah. Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food, Community, Eat Local, Regenerative Agriculture, Sullivan Catskills is a great one. It's maybe the most relevant local one. That's the um, Sullivan Catskills Visitors Association kind of tag. And anyone that does any type of tourism really um, uses that one a lot. Um, so yeah, I do 4-H Grows here, Sullivan Fresh, Healthy Food for All. So, so some of those are our personal taglines. So I go back and forth with relevancy, but um, so I'm doing some trying to promote my own hashtags to make them relevant. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a little bit of that. And then I'm also, cause that's like the long-term <laughs> strategy. And then I'm also kind of um, piggybacking on other popular hashtags of people doing similar work in the local food or agricultural realm. Does that make sense? Um, and, yep. and then I copy those and save them and I just try and make the whole thing really efficient. So I feel good about it. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Lindsay, and yeah. thank you, Barbara, for being our guest, and the recordings will be available. I'll send an email out to all participants um, when they're available on the website. It just will take me about 24 hours or more or so to get it up, and um, the ones from earlier this month or, you know, in the spring are up on the marketing page of our agriculture website. Okay, perfect. On yeah. Perfect. All right, well, thank cool. you so much. I have yeah, to go back to